All television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. Having covered the burden of Babylon, which means confusion, the burden of Moab, which is symbolic of politics, and the burden of Damascus, which is symbolic of captivity, we now come to Isaiah chapter 18 and the burden of America. The United States specifically and nationalism to the point of idolatry is what will be done away with at the seventh trumpet, along with the confusion, which is what Babylon means, politics, which is what Moab symbolizes, and the captivity of the mind brought about by Satan's disciples. Deception, his own children, the Kenites, having globalized their four hidden dynasties from 1830 to 1948 through the United States, with 1969 being when the fifth trumpet began to sound, but five is grace in biblical numerics, and it's not until the woe of the fifth trumpet that the one world political system, the new world order as it's called, comes into being. So with that having been said, Isaiah chapter 18, with a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, woe to the the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, beyond meaning on the opposite side, in this case of the planet Earth. The opposite side of where Ethiopia is is the United States, called Manasseh prophetically. So again, woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond, which means on the opposite side of the rivers of Ethiopia, that sendeth ambassadors by sea and vessels of bulrushes upon the waters, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered in peel and this word peeled means independent, but it can also be translated as tall and smooth-faced, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down whose land the rivers have spoiled, which means divided. In other words, the land the rivers have divided, and so it is. And remember, the United States is one of the horns on the ram of Daniel chapter 8 that gets broken, so to speak, and then cast to the ground and stamped upon by the he-goat, which is symbolic of the shadow government of of the Kenites. So it's a nation measured out and trodden down whose land the rivers have divided, taken over by the he-goat ultimately in 1945 at the end of the Second World War when the United Nations came into being, the great horn of the he-goat written of in Daniel chapter 8 verse 8 in my opinion. That's what the ambassadors back in verse 2 point toward in the vessels of bulrushes upon the waters, symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues in the book of Revelation, which is what the one world political system emerges from at the woe of the fifth trumpet after the great horn of the he-goat is broken and Satan and his angels are cast from heaven to earth when the UN is replaced with the new world order, the beast with seven heads which are symbolic of mountains which are the seven continents of the planet earth that you can read of in Revelation chapter 13. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth see ye when he lifteth up an ensign on the mountains and when he bloweth a trumpet he ye. And again, notice the key role played through the United States in the globalization of the four hidden dynasties when the first four trumpets began to sound from 1830 with educational reform and the advent of mainstream media. And 1830 was also when the Trail of Tears occurred to 1913 with the Federal Reserve Act to 1945 with the United Nations to 1948 with the recognition by the United States of Kenite-occupied Israel, which was brought about by the United Nations. The first four trumpets all sounding together once the generation of the fig tree began in 1948, with 1969 being when the eagle landed during the Apollo 11 space mission, but again, five is grace in biblical numerics, meaning the fifth trumpet is a grace period up until the woe of the fifth trumpet when the five-month-long hour of temptation begins. So when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye, understand, in other words, for so the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest and I I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For afore the harvest, which is the end of the world as we know it, at the seventh trumpet, before that, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. At the woe of the sixth trumpet, when most Christians begin to worship Satan when he appears as Antichrist, that's when they'll be cut off of the tree of life, which is the many members 
many-membered body of the true Christ and grafted onto the many-membered body of the false Christ, along with the natural branches of Satan's family tree, that is to say the Kenites, the sons of Cain, when all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time. That's when Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh are plucked up by the roots because they're no longer Christian nations once they begin worshiping Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. But then the Zadok are delivered up, and the Holy Spirit speaks through them, bringing the 144,000 along with whosoever will out of the confusion and into the truth. And upon repentance, they're grafted back into God's family tree, the tree of life. But in the next verse, we see what happens to those who fail to repent before the true Christ returns. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth. And the fowls shall summer upon them, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. And this is that remnant that are slain in the battle of Armageddon that you can read of in Revelation chapter 19 verse 21 as well as in the battle of the valley of Haman Gog as you can see in verse 4 of Ezekiel 39 Gog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal will fall upon the mountains of Israel that is to say on the continent of North America in Alaska which is part of Manasseh bordering Canada which is part of Ephraim the two mountains of Israel where the tribes were scattered to that make up one of the seven mountains which are the seven continents of the world and Gog will fall upon the mountains of Israel along with all his bands and all the people that are with him. And God the Father will give them unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured, resurrecting into shame at the seventh trumpet as opposed to resurrecting into eternal life. When all are changed into spiritual bodies, when the true Christ returns as King of kings and Lord of lords at the seventh trumpet, in that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trotted underfoot, whose land the rivers have spoiled, which means divided, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, Mount Zion. This is when Christ sends his angels to gather his elect to Jerusalem, along with whosoever will repent before the seventh trumpet and be grafted back into God's family tree, whereby they can take part in the first resurrection into eternal life. And as it's written in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17, all nations before him, our heavenly father, that is to say, are as nothing. They are counted to him as less than nothing and vanity, which means emptiness. There will be no such thing as nationalism when the true Christ returns because at that time and only at that time, at the seventh trumpet, can there ever truly be one nation under God, one kingdom, that is to say, on earth as it is in heaven. Because upon the return of the true Christ, there will be given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, because it's the kingdom of God. And after the thousand years are finished, whoever follows Satan again will be blotted out of existence in the lake of fire, along with Satan, everyone else will go into the eternity, the third world age. So disregarding the negative part of God's plan being carried out by the Kenites, America, or any other Christian nation is really a shadow of things to come, because in all reality, this there's only one Christian nation at this time, not a geographical location, but rather the many-membered body of the true Christ throughout the globe.